Welcome back. You're still watching Business Incorporated live on Channels Television. Now to our next uh, conversation. South African Finance Minister Enoch Godongwana will, be, will present the government's spending framework for the next uh, three years on Wednesday as the economy struggles to recover from the damage wrought by the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, for expectations now on the spending framework and economic outlook, we have Matt Kindiger, practice lead, sub-Saharan Africa front of you, uh, join us. Great to have you. Hi, thanks for having me on the show today. Yeah, so uh, what are the main uh, themes you're, you're expecting to emerge from the uh, budget speech on Wednesday? Uh, yeah, certainly. So I think everyone's going to be, or everyone that's interested in South Africa will be glued to the budget speech. I think there are three main themes that will emerge uh, during the budget speech on Wednesday. The first is on taxes. So because the government's revenue uh, generation over the last year or so has been slightly better than they were previously forecasting. Uh, we are expecting very few changes to taxes, and this crucially means tax increases are likely to be avoided, which is generally quite positive. Uh, but it does also mean that the government's aim to cut taxes to stimulate the economy is also um, uh, unlikely because it does still face a very significant deficit. Uh, another theme is around civil service wages. So the government previously, um, during COVID, it, it was planning to use civil, cut, the, the cutting of civil service wages as its main tool of advancing fiscal consolidation. It's probably going to struggle to cut civil service wages because of um, political pressure to keep civil service wage growth high. But we are likely to see probably at inflation, or maybe slightly above inflation, civil service uh, wage growth. Uh, and in terms of spending priorities, that's the other major theme. Uh, we're probably going to see very limited real terms increases to uh, government departments and recurrent expenditure. But the one area that is likely to see above inflation increases is infrastructure investment, because the government sees this as a major driver of the economic recovery. So that's probably the one area that we're going to see a bit of a, a more optimistic spending outlook. All right, Matt, but what would the budget mean for, you know, growth outlook for uh, South Africa's economy? Uh, so because the budget speech will probably reveal moderate progress towards some physical consolidation, or you can put it another way, we are unlikely to see a significant deterioration in public finances the prospects of a credit rating downgrade are unlikely, so they're quite small at the moment. And this is good in terms of sentiment and also the stability of the RAND. So that's probably the first most immediate impact. In terms of the impact on GDP growth, it's probably going to be very muted. It's unlikely to affect growth significantly positively or negatively over the next year or so. And this is because the government has very little scope to cut taxes, as I mentioned earlier. But it also has um, uh, continued pressure to consolidate public finances. It, it has a, uh, during previous budget speeches, the government made it very clear that it wants to uh, budget the balance, um, sorry, <laughs> balance the budget by the middle of the decade. And so this also means that it can't really stimulate, stimulate growth. What we could see, however, is a, a bit of an aggravation of inflationary trends that we've seen in uh, South Africa recently. Uh, this is because the government wants to, will probably reveal an increase to fuel uh, levies, which will raise fuel prices, which are already increasing. So that, that could have a short-term immediate impact as well. Yeah, quite a lot to uh, chew there. But how are businesses likely to be affected by you know, the budget over the coming year? So there are two things to consider. One is around the operating environment, and the other is the demand environment. So in terms of the operating environment, the fact that tax increases are likely to be avoided over at least the next six months is broadly very positive from a planning perspective, but also a demand recovery perspective. Consumers, households in particular, and companies that sell to households will be breathing a sigh of relief, we expect, because uh, income taxes are unlikely to be increased, uh, VAT also unlikely to be increased. So that's probably going to be quite positive from a demand perspective, uh, um, in the private sector at least. But from the public sector, we are expecting to see quite weak demand growth uh, from, a, uh, from the government over the next six months or so. Uh, so quite different from a private and public sector perspective. One thing we would 
um, caution, however, is that when we look at the midterm budget speech later on this year, we expect tax increases to become more likely. So that is probably something that businesses sh should consider when they look you know, towards October, November this year and into 2023. All right, I guess all eyes on finance ministry come uh, Wednesday. Uh, thank you so much, Matt Kinnigar, practice lead, Sub-Saharan Africa, front of you. Always great having you on the show. Well, thanks for having me today.